But now imagine a badly designed combination lock, one that gives little hints, a bit like the childhood game of Hunt the Slipper, where you say, getting warmer, getting warmer, getting cooler, getting warmer, getting warmer. <laughs> Suppose that each time you turn the dial and you get a little bit closer to the correct combination, Suppose that the bank vault door creaks open just a chink and a little bit of money spills out. <laughs> the dribbling combination lock, which of course the bank robber would instantly home in on the jackpot if he had that sort of clue. The dribbling combination lock is a better analogy for Darwinian evolution than the real bank lock, which offers only two poss possibilities, the jackpot or nothing. And the trouble with creationist arguments is that they all think that evolution by natural selection is a jackpot or nothing argument. Nothing could be further from the truth. But God, the God theory on the other hand, really is a jackpot or nothing argument because God is postulated as being there from the beginning before the process of evolution got going. I can imagine God-like beings like the ones that Crick and Orgel postulated as seeding life from their planet to ours. I can imagine godlike beings, such that if we ever met them, I mean, if they came here, for example, in order to have got here, they would have to be godlike, because for sure we couldn't get there. I mean, they need to be technological wizards of a, of a sort that we have no, no comprehension of. We would worship them as gods, but they would not be gods because ultimately they would have uh, evolved by a gradual process. But the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament, the God of the Muslims, who's always been there, he is the ultimate <laughs> 747. Well, why not teach the controversy? There are real controversies in science. They're interesting, and we should certainly teach them. Uh, it's a, a very important part of scientific education to understand that science is not a done deal, that scientists are constantly changing their minds as new evidence comes in. That's important. So let's, by all means, teach controversies that really are proper scientific controversies. But the controversy over so-called intelligent design versus evolution is just not a real controversy at all. I hope it's not pure wishful thinking to suggest that there is a new wave of reason sweeping across America, Britain, the whole of the Western world. One indication of this, perhaps, is a wave of best-selling books, which I'm happy to advertise. <laughs> and perhaps even more significant is the backlash. And I, uh, invite you to count along. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. The flea allusion you will of course recognize from W.B. Yeats, but was there ever dog that praised his fleas? Hence the flea powder that just got rid of that. <laughs> and a nice little afterthought. You... <laughs> you may not have seen the British edition, but that's a, uh, a, a, that's a copy of the, of the cover design of the, of the British edition of The God Delusion.
I'm not trying in this lecture to teach facts, and I'm certainly not trying to indoctrinate. I'm trying to raise consciousness. And we've all met the phrase consciousness raising in the context of feminism. It's especially powerful. There's no law against using a phrase like the rights of man or one man, one vote. Yet because we've all had our consciousness raised by feminists, most of us feel kind of uneasy when we hear people use a phrase like one man, one vote. And even those who still use man in that sort of sentence do so with their consciousness raised. They know what they're doing. They're taking a stand for traditional language, perhaps, or trying deliberately to rile feminists. But everybody, on one side or the other, has had their feminist consciousness raised. And I want to raise our consciousness about some unconscious assumptions we all make about religion. Let me try a little experiment on you. At Christmas time one year, my newspaper in Britain, The Independent, was looking for a seasonal picture. And they found a heartwarmingly ecumenical one at a school nativity play. The three wise men were played by Shadbreet, a Sikh, Musharraf, a Muslim, and Adele, a Christian, all aged four. Now, my guess is that you probably think that picture's rather sweet. How nice that four-year-olds who belong to different religions should come together in a nativity play. <laughs> now, suppose the caption said this. Shadbreet, a socialist, <laughs> Musharraf, a conservative, and Adele, a liberal, all aged four. <laughs> Shadbreet, an atheist, Musharraf, an agnostic, and Adele, a secular humanist, <laughs> all aged four. I'm trying to raise consciousness. I hope that that series of three slides has raised your consciousness. I hope that every time from now on you hear anybody talking about, say, a Catholic child or a Protestant child or a Muslim child, you will protest. You will say, you wouldn't talk about a postmodernist child <laughs> or a Keynesian child or a Hayekian monetarist child. <laughs> there is no such thing as a Catholic child. There's only a child of Catholic parents. There's no such thing as a Protestant child, only a child of Protestant parents. There's no such thing as a Muslim child, only a child of Muslim parents. I repeat these slogans over and over again, probably too often. Too often? It can't be too often when you're in the business of consciousness raising. Please join me in protesting every time you hear anyone ever referring to a Catholic child, a Christian child, a Muslim child, etc. I like to think that this particular piece of consciousness raising has had some, uh, some effect. I'm now going to play you a short three minute extract from a British comedian called Marcus Brigstock. Um, and the, it's, it's quite funny. I hope you don't mind if I, I hope you don't take offense too. Um, uh, um, at, at the end of this, of this monologue, it, somebody's put, so, put sort of pictures onto it as well. I think it must originally have been on, on radio. Uh, at the end, I hope you'll get the, the same consciousness raising point that I've just made. So I'll start the, I hope the sound will come through. I'd like to start this week with a request, and this one goes out to the followers of the three Abrahamic religions, to the Muslims, Christians, and Jews. It's just a little thing, really, but do you think that when you've finished smashing up the world and blowing each other to bits and demanding special privileges while you do it, do you think maybe the rest of us could sort of have our planet back? <laughs> um, I wouldn't ask, but the thing is, I'm starting to think there must be something written in the special books each of you so enjoy referring to that tells you it's all right to behave like precious, petulant, pugnacious pricks. 